I see ma many, many directions. I, I, I think these substances are to psychiatry and the study of religious experience as the microscope is to biology or the telescope is to astronomy. It's an incredibly valuable tool if it's wisely and responsibly used. And it can, and the, the realms waiting to be explored within the human mind are every bit as vast as the cells or the cosmos. Uh, I mean, we're talking about humility. I, I think it's very appropriate to acknowledge that our knowledge is incredibly primitive right now. And we hardly have the language, the concepts, the tools. This is the very beginning of a, a, uh, a, a huge uh, exploration of the mystery of who we are as a human, as human beings, of what the nature of reality is, uh, um, what what the energy that makes up. Uh, reality, you know, sorry we don't have better words, is made of, uh, and we have all kinds of different thoughts and theories, but we're just beginning this process. Um, and I think it's critical that the research move forward with a sense of uh, humility, interdisciplinary cooperation, uh, avoiding sensationalism, uh, being grounded, keeping a healthy skepticism going, um, but to not allow our fears to drive the research underground once again. In the history of not only the recent decades, but you know, you can go back, these drugs have been around for at least 2,000 years and they emerge in cultures and they get suppressed and they emerge and they get suppressed and they emerge and get suppressed. And, uh, Alan Watts hypothesized it's because of the taboo of knowing who we are, that we're really afraid of too much knowledge. And, and so we, when we have a tool that can awaken us to really understanding our, our spiritual nature, we get scared and we don't want to know too much. So. Uh, it gets locked up again, and the cultures work uh, with us. <laughs>